Now, this is a real story. When I was younger, I remember when they preached about the second coming of Christ. I would ask God, like I would even say a prayer, God, I beg. <laughs> Don't come yet till I get married. And in today's video, I'm talking about the idol that we celebrate. The idea of marriage that has been elevated to even be equal to salvation. That as if, if you're not married, it means maybe you're not even saved. Like, if you're not married, you're not this. Your status in the society, your value, like it tends to like, it defines who you are. And then... If you're single, then something is definitely wrong with you. And I think I'm going to do a video on singleness, but this is not that video. Today, it's just this thought that came to me. And I realized that we celebrate marriage and then we've made an idol of it. And I realized for myself that even that thought, which I know I'm not alone with that thought of Jesus, don't come yet till I marry. I know there are so many other people like me because I shared it with a friend and he said he thought the same thing too. Like Jesus, don't come because I've not yet enjoyed life. And I realized that our focus has been misplaced even in the church realm because of how we've elevated some things and it becomes an idol to a pedestal that we now value these things more than Christ who should be the object of our devotion, who should be the object of our longing. Like Paul Apostle came to a realization of saying that I may know him. We've not come to that place in our faith. And it's of recent, I don't want to get ahead of myself, that I came to a place of like, whether I'm married or not, I'm not still married yet. So I said, whether I'm married or not, and Christ decides to come today, now I feel like because I know I have this divine assurance, blessed assurance, you can come any day. Because even thinking about the thought of don't come yet till I get married, I was of the opinion, this is selfish, first of all. And then what about other people that, you know, maybe are younger than me and then they may not have the opportunity to be married because in life, as long as we're living, when Christ comes, many people will not be married. Some will be married, some will be divorced, some are already dead and would be dead by then. And if you are alive till he comes, glory be to God. If you are not, glory be to God. If you are married, glory be to God. If you are not, glory be to God. The object of our devotion should not be these idols that we elevate. Christ don't come yet to rebuild the house. Because to some people it may not be marriage. But to us religious Christian boys, and the thought was, they made it feel like for you to enjoy pleasure in life, you must get married. For you to become this, be valued, you know, be counted as a man, you have to be married. So this becomes a stage that has been turned to an idol. And we celebrate this idol that young ladies today don't feel value because they are not married. Because their marital status hasn't changed. And I was asking someone, what does marriage really change about you? It only changes that status social studies but it doesn't change you marriage doesn't save you from sins i understand the benefits of marriage i'm not trying to talk down on that but there is this aspect of us having an idol in marriage and celebrating it which is what we need to come to a place of addressing let's think about this a lot of people have gotten into marriage and inadvertently gotten into prison imprison their life imprison their destinies imprison their old generations to patterns and traumas that they would not have experienced if not for the propagation of a wrong thing, an idol that we get to celebrate and be like, you have to get married, you must get married. You... I'm like, yeah, that's why Paul Apostle came to a place of saying he made it so plain that it's not by force to marry. And like I said, I'm not trying to talk down on marriage. The only thing I'm talking about in today's video is the aspect of idolizing marriage. It is a wrong thing and it is leading people into the wrong places. And if you are one of those that are listening to me, if you've had that thought, Christ don't come yet till I marry, you have to redefine your thoughts and look into yourself again. Why do I really want this? Do I want this more than Christ? If Christ comes now, would it, would it be something that I, I regret that I didn't get to have sex before? You know, because that's really the point for us. Okay. As a Christian kid growing up as a Christian young boy, I'm taught about purity and I'm like, okay, I'm going to keep myself pure. Then I'm taught about the second coming of Christ. And I'm like, which one is most important? Because out of these two, which is most important on the earthly realm, I would like to like get married and have sex before Christ would come. And like, it's a real thought. It's a real thing. Right? So, but then I was never really taught about God that I knew him. I knew that. 
out of everything, like above all else, is the priority, is the top priority. So now I elevated marriage to a point of saying, don't come yet, put your coming on hold till I get here out of my selfishness. And that took me to realize, having to go back in thought that I did not really love God. I thought I loved God and I, I tried to persuade myself or convince myself to believe that I loved God, but I didn't really love him. I only loved him to get him to love me. And that's different from loving him because I know him. That's different from loving him because I know what loving him means. Because I was just loving him, just like us humans, we love people and we are expecting love back, which is normal in a relationship, in a mutual relationship. But Christ is teaching us about this unconditional love, that when we love, we love. It's not like, you know, tell someone I love you and you're waiting for them to say it back. If they don't say it back, it hurts you because they didn't say it back. No, if you love, just love. Love freely. It's not easy. It's easier said than done. When you're in a relationship, it's a different ball game entirely because you love someone and the person doesn't love you back. Don't stay in a place of unrequited love. That's not what I'm promoting. But I'm promoting the thought of saying, if you really love God, you should know God. You should know the love. The scripture says that in this is love. Not that we loved him. That should enter your sense. <laughs> in this is love. Not that we loved him. Mm but that he loved us and gave himself for us as a propitiation for our sins. And we have to realize that to us to love him, it's to receive his love. Once we receive his love, we now have the capacity to even love him. And what is loving him? It is to obey him. If you love me, keep my commandments. That's what he says. It's love to him. Love to him is not about the emotions we feel when we get to a place of worship. I love you forever. I love you. And we sing and raise our hands forever. It's about the place of saying, if you love me, keep my commandments. Are you keeping his commandments? If you are not, then you don't love him. Certainly you don't. So what is of top priority for you to live for him or to live to get your needs met? To live for him or to live to get your wants satisfied, to satisfy your flesh, to have the sex you want to have before he comes or to get married before he comes? What is the most important thing? And I'm trying to say Christ is the priority. Christ is the goal. Christ is the object of our adoration. It is not us getting married. It is not us getting the money. It is not us building the houses. It is not us getting any of these things, which is what scripture tells us. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things, the marriage, the sex, God is going to give you multiplied that you marry a good wife and you guys are emotionally okay because at this point, when you seek God, God is going to expose things in you that are broken so that you will seek wholeness and healing. And once you walk the walk of healing and your spouse walks that walk with you, you get to a healthy place that you'll be happily married for life. Not a place of you are married but you're in prison. Now you see that God's way is better than ours. You see that his thoughts, like he said, is higher than ours. We feel like, oh, if he's gonna, if he comes now, no, no, no. Put your mind on what is of top priority. And these are the few thoughts I'm gonna give you before I end this video. Do not love God as a means to an end. Love God because you've known his love. You've received his love. Now, Colossians says that, for in Christ lives all the fullness of God in a human body. So you also are complete through your union with Christ, who is the head over every ruler and authority. Marriage doesn't make you complete. Getting the money doesn't make you complete. Getting whatever thing you want to get doesn't make you complete. But Christ makes you complete. In him, we are complete. Because he's the head of rulers and authority. So once we seek our completeness and fulfillment in him, every other thing, our addition, they are icing on the cake. Again, Christ is the goal. Philippians 1.21, Paul said, For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Like he's saying, as I'm living, my whole life belongs to Christ. For it's not I that live, but Christ lives in me. That is my goal. To live like Christ as a believer. To live seeking his kingdom. Again, becoming like Christ here on earth is the passion and the pursuit. The pursuit shouldn't be these things. The part of fulfilling God's kingdom is that God wants us to impact the world. And we can't impact the world being poor. We need 
the resources to impact the world. But for us to even get to that resources, we don't run to the resources. We run to God and the resources run to us. Scripture even says in Proverbs that if you run after riches, they're going to grow wings and fly. But if you run after God, that is the attracting factor that will bring these things to you. Because when you run after God, you get to know your identity, you build your value, and now you have value to give out. And because you have the capacity to give out value, you are now attracting the resources that you need. This is a blessed thought to have. Paul said, I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him, sharing in his death. I praise on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Thank you so much for watching today's video. And I hope that all the idols that we have placed up above prioritizing God, God will help us to let go of those idols and lay them aside and know that our priority, our number one goal should be Christ. Christ and Christ. Amen. Share this video to your friend and I would like you to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel i am om it is a pleasure of mine to have you watch today's video and i want you also to watch the next video and check other videos in my channel and let me know your thoughts about today's video thank you and god bless you